what is up? Thanks for clicking through this video. It's the Concert Buddy coming back with another video. This is video number three for me on this channel as part of the YouTube experience. Thanks for checking it out. On this video, I'm going to go walk through a couple of uh, things I wanted to share, particularly what I'm going to call Vinyl Resolutions 2022. Everyone does New Year's Eve, New Year's resolutions. I'm going to get in great shape. I'm going to eat better. Oh, wake up and smell the coffee. <laughs> These women are professional athletes. The only thing you ever exercise are your lips and your hips. Yada, yada, yada. I'm going to actually approach that from a different perspective, and I'm going to walk you guys through how I'm approaching 2022 from a record collecting perspective, particularly how I'm going to do things a little bit differently coming up in 2022. First thing I'm going to do in terms of a vinyl resolution is I'm going to focus more on quality over quantity. You like Huey Lewis in the news? What I mean by that is when I'm going to shows or stores or garage sales, thrift stores, I'm going to start kind of pulling back on buying volume, buying cheapies, buying uh, extreme values, things that are basically filling up a lot of the less and less space I actually have to store these things. And it doesn't mean I'm going to, I'm going to pass up opportunities to add to the collection. Good stuff. More so instead of buying a lot of dollar, $2, $3, three for tens, I'm going to start trying to scale those kind of purchases back. Look, you can't be serious, man. You cannot be serious. And instead focus on adding quality to the collection. Now that doesn't mean I'm just going to only go for white whales, for grails, that kind of stuff. I do have a list like a lot of us collectors do, but by and large, I'm pretty pretty fortunate that I've been able to cross off a lot of the, the high heat on my list over the years. So I still have a list, but it's a working list of things that are, some are worth saving for, some are just purely on the hunt. If I see them out, things to look for, right? Case in Point is a record I just picked up online. Marilyn Manson Mechanical Animals. Uh, this is an original press. It's the uh, the white and blue two-disker. Um, this was actually an online purchase through Discogs, but it was a store that I have frequented before in Columbia, Missouri called Hit Tracks Records. Uh, I'll leave some information below. But long story short, uh, this record continues to kind of go up in price. And I've been watching it a few years now, and I think when I started watching it, it was like a $200 record, which is a little a little rich for my blood, but it only continues to escalate in price because obviously they're not repressing this one anytime soon. Shit! Manson's got a lot of legal problems. It's a whole litany of reasons why. Now they make bootlegs of this. I personally am not a big bootleg collector. I'm not knocking it, it's just not my thing. So I didn't want to have to get a bootleg of this and the price, like I said, continues to go up. So uh, through the great effort or through the great um, experiences I've already had with that store in Columbia, Missouri, when I've passed through driving through the state, it made this purchase a real easy one. And with that, it kind of got me thinking of what I'm talking to you about now in terms of Maybe I should start winding down or not doing as much of the cheapy purchases and start really trying to get things that will be part of my collection for a long time, but also things that, as I see it, are going to continue to go up and up and up in price. She. So more investment, more making concerted efforts to make these purchases really have an impact in my collection. So that's... Vinyl resolution number one. When it comes to vinyl resolution number two, great segue here. How am I going to store my records into the coming years going forward? Right now, I use a lot of, you know, pretty decent outer sleeves, usually like 12, 12 and three quarter inch sleeves. Just depends on what the record is. And I'm also, as you can kind of see, I'm also somebody who does the uh, sleeve outside the sleeve using like MoFi or Disc Keeper sleeves from Sleeve City, what have you. Um, what I've found in the last couple of years, particularly, is there's other options. There's Japanese sleeves, which aren't really my thing. 
I'm not really a big like sleeve and have to keep reopening. I know some folks are more power to you, just not for me. But uh, I'd say about a year and a half ago, maybe two years, I'm, I'd have to look it up. <clears throat> I was watching Frank Landry's channel, channel 33 RPM. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Frank's work, great contributor to the vinyl community. And he had a guy on named Mike at Vinyl, uh, vinyl Storage Solutions, I believe it's called. And Mike was creating a different type of outer sleeve and different sleeving products. And at that time, his big development, his big IP intellectual property that he was bringing to the marketplace was having records that had a pocket inside of a sleeved record, which really seemed great to me because up to this point, I had just been putting them in the regular sleeve and there's some air in there and dust can get in there and so forth. So great invention, great idea. I bought some of the sleeves at the time. They had different types like two mil, three mil, all that kind of stuff. I am far from knowing really if there's a real difference between a lot of those thicknesses. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. But uh, I bought like a 25 pack and I used a couple of them, but it wasn't something that I was ready to take the over 2,000 pieces of my collection and just buy 2,000 sleeves and redo the whole thing. All that said, recently it was brought to my attention that uh, Mike has a new product, which is a gatefold sleeve, which is probably a game changer in the fact that before you could take some of his sleeves and you could sandwich or manufacture things that would be able to house gatefold records in a pretty decent, pretty displayable way, if you will. But now Mike has created these gatefold sleeves, which really are a game changer in the sense that you can take a true gatefold and slide it through the sleeve and still have the accessibility to open the gatefold, look at the artwork inside. And uh, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, I wouldn't say revolutionary. That's, you know, again, this is record collecting. It's not like we're curing cancer or anything here, but I think from a perspective of being able to actually engage in the records and not have to go through the labor of opening these sleeves and putting things back and so forth. You can literally just open it up and it's right there. So I bought some of those right around the end of the year. I decided to buy, it might make a nice sizable purchase with Mike. And so I'm going to spend this next few months resleeving a lot of my archival records and kind of getting them up to speed as I'm uh, really changing the way I'm approaching storing my records. Now, the other thing that I wanted to share is that Sleeve City, which is a company that I've used before for some of my inner and outer sleeves, Generally speaking, for my higher, I guess, higher dollar records, if you will, I use MoFi sleeves or MoFi type sleeves. But uh, Sleeve City makes, I mean, they all do Mike at Vinyl Storage Solutions makes his own too. They make a very similar kind of inner sleeve. But what I will say is that Vinyl Storage Solutions um, not only offer these kind of inner sleeves, Sleeve City, going back to where I was, uh, Sleeve City has created what I think is also a pretty exciting product in that. It's an inner sleeve that has two flaps. Actually, I'll pull one up right here. It's this product right here. I'll put a link below. But long story short, this product is just like the traditional kind of MoFi sleeve that you've seen before, but it has not one, but two. So as a lot of records are coming in, two LPs, 45 RPMs, what have you, um, you have to usually use two MoFi or MoFi-ish sleeves to you know, catalog them to put them away. This, you only need one sleeve. It costs a little bit more. Obviously, it's got a little bit more material in there, but it's also something that I bought at the end of the year as I'm trying to kind of make a concerted effort to, um, you know, archive or store these records in a fun and exciting and, you know, visible way, right? Like a lot of these different variants and colors that, that uh, manufacturers are still pushing the boundaries of, like it's cool to pull them off your shelf and see them right there as opposed to have to pull out the jacket, pull out the sleeve and so forth. So the third thing that I'm looking at or considering a vinyl resolution, if you will, is making these videos. I've been putting this off for a long time. Uh, I have said this in my intro video a couple weeks ago, but I've always enjoyed the content that members of the vinyl community have put out there, even if it's the long, super uh, soliloquy filled videos, if it's flip videos, what have you like. Content to me is, is, is whatever is in the eye of the beholder. And there's a lot of great content creators in the vinyl community just sharing their collection. 
And I've, like I said in video number one, you should go back and watch it. Shameless plug. Um, but yeah, part of the reason I started doing it this year is finally, you know, I've, I've befriended several members of the vinyl community over the years, directly and indirectly. And I've, the feedback I always got was, yeah, you should do this too. It's a lot of fun. And and there's a lot of value in sharing your vinyl adventures with other people. And I'm like, yeah, sure, it's a great idea. So 2022 vinyl resolution number three is making these videos for you to like, to comment, to dislike, to do whatever you want. Um, my main thing, and I'm going to say this probably every video, you're probably going to get sick of it, is I just want to be engaged. I'm just trying to engage with you the viewer in terms of sharing not just my vinyl experiences hopefully sharing some information showing records that maybe you didn't know existed or talking about my point of view in terms of uh, sound quality or what records to pick up to avoid all that kind of stuff so everyone's channel is what they make it and i'm going to try to make this channel um, fun and informative and serve value because you know obviously our most precious commodity on this planet is time and the last thing you should do is waste your time watching bad content or videos that don't have value and so i'm not saying every video i'm going to make it i'm gonna knock it out of the park i'm sure down the road i'm gonna look back at these introductory videos that i'm making right now and i'm probably going to cringe at how terrible they are um, but i hope you can kind of bear with me as i'm kind of getting my my uh, sea legs, if you will, as I'm taking this on. I'm learning about lighting and how to edit videos and all that kind of stuff. So um, work in progress, as we all are. But I do want to thank you, if you've made it this far, for just getting through the entire video. Um, like I said, like, comment, subscribe, whatever you want to do. I appreciate it. Share would be great if you want to share this with others you have as we kind of start to get this plane off the, uh, the runway, if you will. Um, anyway that's all i got for this video thanks for watching really appreciate it and i'll spin you later well 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 how the turntables